When we think of comics and graphic novels, we generally think of images like these and associate them with texts like this. Holy fruit salad! Hello, kitties! Meet the Joker! <laughs> this notion is exploded, though, by James Bucky Carter in his book, Building Literacy Connections with Graphic Novels, Page by Page, Panel by Panel. In it, Carter presents a series of articles that encourage us as scholars and educators to view graphic novels in a new and more serious light. The book is comprised of a series of articles by a variety of authors explaining why and how comics and graphic novels can be used both as standalone pieces and in conjunction with more conventional literacies in the classroom to engender student learning. While the latter two-thirds of the book is dedicated to case studies around specific graphic novels in various classrooms, Carter starts off the book with two articles, one by himself and one by Douglas Fisher and Nancy Frey, that examine our understandings of literacy and explain why introducing graphic texts into the classroom is a viable and valuable choice for educators. Carter leads off his own article with an argument, supported by extensive research, for the benefits of an arts-rich environment for students. He states that an arts-rich environment reaches students who might not otherwise be reached and reaches them in ways in which they might not be reached, that it helps students connect to themselves and one another, that it challenges students who are already considered successful and stimulates metacognition in all students. However, the bulk of current advocacy for graphic novels in the classroom has tried to tie the medium not so much to the beneficial elements of the arts-rich environment but more directly to notions and models of literacy, elements of pedagogy that teachers of English language arts are more comfortable exploring and certainly with which they are more engaged in their everyday teaching. Gretchen Schwartz tackles this graphic novel literacy connection directly in her article, Graphic Novels for Multiple Literacies, 2002. Hearkening to the ideals of critical and visual literacy, she explains that in an increasingly visual culture, Literacy educators can profit from the use of graphic novels in the classroom, especially for young adults. Not only do graphic novels promote literacy, but they offer value, variety, and a new medium for literacy that acknowledges the impact of visuals. Furthermore, Schwartz asserts that an important benefit of graphic novels is that they present alternative views of culture, history, and the human life in general and in accessible ways. Tying the graphic novel to progressive cultural and critical notions of literacy, with respect to functional literacy, Swartz suggests that graphic novels can be used for teaching literary terms and techniques, and that social studies is a curricular area in which they're particularly strong and can easily be used across the curriculum. Quote, graphic novels can bring new life beyond bland textbooks, unquote. Indeed, many graphic novels that are considered at the top of their format deal with political and social issues. In her essay, Showing and Telling History Through Family Stories in Persepolis and Young Adult Novels, Marla Harris suggests that bringing graphic novels into the classroom can be useful firstly because the pictorial format allows them to enter into difficult subject matter more readily than they might otherwise, and second, that the assignment provides a bridge between students' leisure reading, which for many middle school students includes graphic novels, and the required reading that they do in school. Harris lays out a unit in her article centered around Marjan Satrapi's acclaimed graphic novel, Persepolis which tells the story of the author's childhood in post-revolutionary Iran. Harris gives suggestions for how teachers might contextualize the piece historically, within the framework of current events and in a literary canon. She sees the book as a jumping-off point from which students might build up a sophisticated body of knowledge about how family stories relate to larger social and cultural movements. That body of knowledge could then be transferred to the deconstruction of current events or of more advanced literary works. Don Liebold, J.D. Schraffenberger, and James Bucky Carter all have articles in the book which pair graphic texts with classics. Schraffenberger pairs a traditional translation of Beowulf with Gareth Hines' comic version, asserting that the blending of genres provides rich ground for critical thinking and literary appreciation. The visuals assist students with the difficulties of Old English and allow them to engage in deep analysis of tone, metaphor, and other literary devices. In his article, Abandon Every Fear Ye That Enter, The X-Men Journey Through Dante's Inferno, Don Liebold uses a Marvel comic entitled Nightcrawler's Inferno, in which Nightcrawler, one of the mutant X-Men, is led through the circles of hell by his own personal Virgil, Doctor Strange. Liebold's reasoning and his results are very similar to Schraffenberger's with regard to Beowulf. 
The visuals support students in understanding the text, while the piece itself provides a medium for comparison and analysis. Carter pairs Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter with Catherine Arnaldi's The Amazing True Story of a Teenage Mom, along with a media literacy unit and a social critique around the issues of teenage sexuality and single parents. Supported by Arnaldi's text, Carter found students enthusiastically engaging with Hawthorne's and going so far as to engage in social activism around the issues brought up by the texts. I found the most moving article in the book to be Using Graphic Novels, Anime, and the Internet in an Urban High School by Douglas Frey and Nancy Fisher. In it, the authors engaged a class of urban remedial readers in a literacy project culminating the creation of student photo essays. All of the students involved in Frey and Fisher's research were low income and 72% were English language learners. The authors found, as have a host of other researchers and educators, that many written texts operating at the level accessible to students with low reading skills are uninteresting to them because they're topically and conceptually out of sync with students' interests and thinking skills. Frey and Fisher used sections of Will Eisner's Tenement Stories, a piece about life in the Bronx. Many of their students were already familiar with graphic texts in the form of anime, so the authors could build on their already high-functioning visual literacy skills to address a piece that connected with students' lives in an urban setting but that was different enough from students' leisure reading so as not to co-opt a domain of literature which students considered their own. The authors used Eisner's piece to help students build vocabulary, learn to incorporate multiple themes in their writing, produce powerful writing about issues that matter to them, and eventually create creative visual pieces of their own using popular magazines, the internet, and their newly acquired skills. The conclusion of Frey and Fisher's article makes a good summary of their own findings about the value of graphic text in the classroom for remedial readers. Quote, Having begun with the idea that graphic novels were comic books at best and a waste of time at worst, we now realize the power they have for engaging students in authentic writing. These forms of popular culture provided a visual vocabulary of sorts for scaffolding writing techniques, particularly dialogue, tone, and mood. More importantly, we resisted the temptation to focus on remedial skills instruction and instead used popular culture and the media to invite students into school literacy. The use of these forms of popular culture and media afforded us a space to provide students with instruction on the craft and mechanics of writing. Our students not only became better writers, but also became better consumers of ideas and information. I think this last sentence is particularly pertinent when looking at building literacy connections with graphic novels page by page, panel by panel. The notion that the intelligent use of graphic text in the classroom can help students become better consumers of information and ideas is the driving force of the book. This collection of articles provides compelling evidence to encourage us as educators and researchers to engage in that process with students and helpful ideas on how and where we might begin.